please take the floor, Debbie King. Thank you very much. And thank you for the opportunity on behalf of Welcome to present our work on the road, cholera research roadmap, cholera roadmap research agenda today. Next slide, please. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Welcome, we are a UK based uh, funding organisation. Um, our, our role is really to um, welcome, welcome a launching new strategy today. You'll see our vision statement there, which is welcome to support science to solve urgent health challenges facing everyone. And we are a, a financially and politically independent organization. Uh, we are, our funding, funding is based on a large endowment that was left to us by our founder, Henry Welcome, who was a pharmaceutical engineer. And previously, we have um, invested in cholera research in a number of different areas, um, both in basic science around um, genomics at, at the Wellcome, Wellcome Trust funded Sanger Institute. And we've also funded a number of investigator led research programs in cholera. We invest in translational research in terms of vaccine development with our partners at Hilleman Labs in India, and also in the development of diagnostics. And also within the vaccines priority area, which is where our work is based, we've uh, recently led a funding call, uh, a joint funding call with what, what used to be known as DFID in the UK to um, fund projects that inform decision making across all the GTFCC pillars. And also the work that I'm going to present today, which is on the, the research agenda. Next slide, please. The work we've done on cholera is focusing on strengthening the pathway from research to evidence informed decision making. Um, you can see from this uh, diagram here, it's really not a linear pathway. And one of the things that we've identified in our scaping work is that um, the, the research that's currently being done, the evidence that's being generated is not necessarily that that's needed by those who are working in the policy and implementation practice areas. And the work that we're doing with the research agenda is to really ensure that the research that's being conducted is that that's needed and wanted by those who work in policy and practice and to make sure that policy and practice is really um, underpinned by the best possible evidence. Next slide, please. So the reasons that we've chosen for, for focusing on the research agenda is that although there is a, there's a clear strategic vision for cholera control and elimination, which is outlined in the Ending Cholera Roadmap, when it's being used in terms of the national developing national action plans by a number of countries, um, we still see a number of outstanding questions on how to use the, the tools and interventions, you know, the how, the where, the when, to successfully implement the roadmap. And the goal of the research agenda is to identify where those evidence gaps are, and uh, to understand what the priorities are for those within implementation policy and research communities and to communicate the answering those questions and how that will um, improve the implementation measures for cholera control. We very much hope that the research agenda would be used as a strategic guide, a kind of to do list for research priorities, and it would be used by a number of different stakeholders, including researchers to design research projects, uh, donors to evaluate the importance of the um, proposals that they're assessing and a, a way to monitor and evaluate proposals and, and, and progress. Next slide, please. So the methodology that we've used um, to develop the research agenda um, is the Child Health and Nutrition Research Initiative or CHINRI methodology. Um, it's, uh, I think, well known in um, research prioritization, it's really considered, I think, the, the gold standard in terms of prioritizing research questions. And it's got a lot of um, plus points, I think, for this type of work. Firstly, that it's very consultative. It really does involve um, the input of stakeholders across the, across the space. It's very much a democratic process. So everybody, all the stakeholders can, can contribute to the, to, the, to, the, to the outputs. It's a very transparent process. It has a clearly defined context and the prioritization criteria are agreed in advance and made clear. Um, ideas can be um, clearly communicated. The, the strengths and weaknesses of each idea can be clearly communicated and it comes up with a simple intuitive output. It's a quantitative list of questions that comes out, out of the process. Because we're following a standardized methodology, it's something that can be monitored and it can also be repeated at a later point in time. And it really is comprehensive in that um, questions from all types of research can be evaluated in the same framework. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so this slide shows you an overview of the process and I should just pause here to make it clear that we've worked with uh, 
um, a consulting group called MM Global Health or MMGH, uh, who have been developing the research agenda for us. And the work has been overseen by the Research Steering Committee, which includes the GTFCC Secretariat, who've provided strategic guidance to us at all stages of this process. We would like to thank them, thank them for their input here. Um, the first stage of the process, which started in January, was um, to uh, identify the, the barriers barriers to implementation and the evidence gaps and to collate these along with research questions through a series of interviews and surveys and interactions and input from the, work, the GTFCC working groups. Um, to identify the prioritisation criteria and standardise the questions and also at a stakeholder uh, meeting that we held in June to identify the, um, the context in which the research questions would be posed. The second phase, which is currently ongoing, is, is to prioritise the research questions um, against the criteria that we identified, and we're hoping to launch the research agenda early next year. Next slide, please. So this slide just goes into a little bit more detail about how we collected the information on the evidence gaps. So as I said previously, we, we consulted with a number of experts and stakeholders in the space. MMGH were able to contact the 141 experts from a range of different disciplines in the cholera space. Uh, we were able to um, uh, collect research questions that had already been formulated by the GTFCC working groups. And then through a series of interviews and surveys with stakeholders in the space, we were also able to collect, collect input on the uh, prioritization criteria for the questions. Um, the prioritisation uh, criteria are listed here, so um, we focused on the relevance in terms of addressing uh, evidence gaps, uh, the impact in, in terms of reducing cholera deaths and burden, the uh, implementability, how, whether the solutions were implementable in affected countries, whether the research questions were answerable, and whether these, these would lead to sustainable solutions over time. Uh, through a combination of the surveys and the interviews, we were able to identify over 300 evidence gaps. Those 300 evidence gaps were um, formulated then into research questions and reviewed by experts in terms of standardizing their language, identifying those that were a genuine gap. And what this uh, resulted in was 93 research questions to be prioritized. Next slide, please. So as I said earlier, there was also uh, a stage to adapt the methodology um, in terms of the context of the research that we wanted to address. This is the who, the where, the when and the what of these outcomes. And this was uh, conducted at a stakeholder meeting in June. Um, so we focused in terms of population of interest, we kept this very broad, wanting to look at all the countries and communities where cholera is endemic or there's a potential epidemic risk of cholera. In terms of impact, we were, we were interested in looking at reduction in deaths and also burden. But just to, to be clear that burden did also include both the economic and social impact as well as morbidity and prevalence. Geographical scope was also kept very broad and time scale, um, although this was, I think, fairly maybe controversial, quite difficult to agree on in the stakeholder meeting, we agreed to align this with the, with the roadmap from the present day to 2030. Next slide, please. So in terms of the prioritization, the second stage of the, of the uh, research agenda, um, we sent the survey out to 245 people working in the cholera space and asked them to score each of the research questions against the five criteria. And this allowed the questions to be ranked in terms of, um, they had a, a score assigned and they were ranked then in terms of their score based on the, the reviews by the stakeholders in the field. And I would just like to pause here and say that we were very fortunate that we had 138 responses from multiple different regions and multiple different disciplines. You can see the breakdown there at the bottom of the slide. Um, and I would like to thank everybody who took the time to complete the survey because we realized it was a significant time commitment. Um, that work is currently ongoing. We're aiming to complete that next month in November. Um, so next slide, please. Um, although we're not in a position at the moment to uh, publicly share the, the outputs of the research agenda, they will be shared with the heads of the GTFCC working group soon. Um, and we'd just like to say briefly how the research priorities will be categorised in the next slide. So next slide, please. So the prioritisation, the output of the prioritisation exercise 
will lead to a number of different outputs. One is really just the top 20 research questions. So those that were most highly rated by those who reviewed the questions, and they span across multiple different pillars of the, of the uh, roadmap. Some of them are cross-cutting research priorities as well that include multiple different uh, disciplines. But in addition to that top 20 list, we'll also publish the, the top five priorities across each of the pillars. So top five priorities for ACV, for WASH, for, for case management and, and for surveillance. And we do also recognize within that, although we did see fewer questions for discovery research and community engagement, um, the research agenda does also recognize those questions within that format. Um, next slide, please. Um, I'd just like to finish, if I have one more minute, to just um, introduce a new project that we are working on currently within the, um, within the vaccines team at Wellcome. And that's really, uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is to introduce the, the research tracker database. Um, this is something that we, we see as very much a complementary piece um, to the, the research agenda. And something that the GTFCC and Wellcome have already identified is that there's a need for greater global awareness and coordination of research in the cholera space. So what we hope to do by again reaching out to our partners within the cholera field is to gain information on the current and recent research projects that are, that are happening at the moment. Um, and what we're going to do is compile those into a, an interactive searchable database which is going to be hosted on new research section of the GTFCC website to enable um, partners within cholera to, to see what type of research is being done and where, identify where there might be complementary projects um, and potentially where there are evidence gaps. So we hope that we can, again, re rely on your uh, uh, input into this, um, into this new project and allow us to uh, compile and collect together the research that's going on. We're not at the moment looking for anyone to share data or, or results or amounts of funding. What we're really looking for is the, the project titles, the locations, description, main investigators, collaborators, and start and end dates. Um, so we hope that you'll be able to support us in that next phase of our work as well. Um, I'd just like to finish by, next slide please, by thanking, um, everybody who's had input into both the research agenda and the, um, the, the research tracker that we're working on currently. So particularly MMGH who have um, developed the research agenda, uh, Global Health Visions, who I'm sorry I didn't mention earlier, but we're working with Global Health Visions to, um, on a communications plan for the research, research agenda, the GTFCC Secretariat and the Research Agenda Steering Committee, and particularly the GTFCC working groups who've um, given us a lot of input in terms of the research questions. Um, and finally, I'd just like to thank my colleagues within Welcome, Elizabeth Clem, who leads the strategic area on cholera evidence to implementation within the vaccines team, and Helen Graves, who lead, has been managing the research agenda work on behalf of vaccines. Thank you very much. <laughs>